Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy Ebersole, class of 2005. I wish that I could be there with you chatting in person right now, but I'm actually in New Zealand, hopefully, uh, by this point. Hopefully I have found a job in New Zealand by this point. I have a working holiday visa and I'm working my way across New Zealand uh, for about a year, potentially. Uh, right now I'm probably sleeping because it's about 17 hours ahead uh, at that point. Um, but I was right where you guys are nine years ago, I believe. I remember sitting in those chairs and uh, I had no idea, of course, this is the presentation for the Center of Global Citizenship, uh, which did not exist at the time. And I, the, 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 the words global citizenship probably weren't anywhere in my brain uh, at that point. Uh, to me, I, I had grown up my whole life in Ohio, in Akron, the entire capital of the world, uh, proud to say. But like growing up, we didn't travel in my family a whole lot. I went to Niagara Falls, I went to Toronto, Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah, but that was, the, the only places that I had gone prior to really coming to Elizabethtown as far as international travel, really just right across the border in Canada or in Mexico. Um, it wasn't really until I was a student here at Elizabethtown uh, in 2003, I went with Dr. Selker, who was in the political science department at the time, who ran a trip with one of his classes to Ecuador, to Quito and the Andes Mountains around there. And it was an amazing experience. I was in one of the places we stayed at a cloud forest reserve, which is this tree house where you look down on the clouds and there's just hundreds of hummingbirds all around you and hiking through the rainforest and seeing leaves that are twice the size of a person. I mean, these little things, you know, these little leaves are nothing. I mean, these Ecuadorian leaves in the rainforest are just enormous. And while I was there, I think the thing that did it for me, I had a yachak, which is a native healer, kind of like a medicine man would be in Native American spirituality cleansed me. He made me perfect and rid me of all of my imperfections. As you can tell, I'm now perfect. This guy, this ceremony consisted of standing in this cinder block house with everyone watching in just my bathing suit. And this yachak is chanting all these things. I, you know, I have no idea what he's saying because he's speaking in Quechua, the native language uh, of the people there in Ecuador. And the ceremony consists of putting just about every possible substance in your mouth and spitting it onto the person who's being cleansed. So we've got honey, alcohol, uh, spit, and then what he would do is take the alcohol and blow it onto a flame. So there's a big fireball, which actually singed my hairs for about a month, uh, wasn't there. The fun part, that one is he took stinging nettles, which are little prickly, sharp plants and kind of brushes them over you gently. Uh, it really hurt a lot, but in the end, it changed me. And so I credit that Yachak with giving me this instilled love of travel <laughs> that I have. Uh, it really kind of sparked this interest in getting to see different places, different people, getting to know different cultures and kind of appreciating those cultures, not only for what they are, but for what they can bring to my understanding of the of kind of the greater society, how things work together, and just appreciating things that are different. Not seeing WalMarts and McDonald's uh, and KFCs, though KFCs are everywhere. <laughs> I after that trip to Ecuador, I found out then later while I was still here at E Town about a program that BCA was just starting at the time in. Australia, a place that I had always wanted to go. It had just always seemed like this really interesting country, kind of all the great things about the United States without all of the violence and etc. It's like a really cool little civilized place, but that no one really cares about. It just kind of hangs out down there with really cool animals. And so BCA was starting their first program in Australia. And so I went and spent a semester in Sydney and traveled all up and down the East Coast and swam with fish and sharks and giant clams in the Great Barrier Reef and drove around the largest sand island in the world, Fraser Island, and met amazing people from all over the world. I set up uh, what I call the Year of Living 
spontaneously, authentically, and peacefully. And I said, for this year, I'm going to do everything as peacefully as possible and try to have all my experiences be very authentic and spontaneous, which is not something that I generally am. But I thought, there's a lot of really cool things that can happen if you just relax and let let yourself kind of enjoy and go with, with what you're feeling to an extent. Um, and so I set up this trip and I ended up going to... So I set up this trip and I ended up going to Germany last summer uh, where I worked with an organization called Volunteers for Peace. And they're based out of New Hampshire and they set people up with local volunteer organizations all around the world. And so I was in Germany with 17 other young adults. I was the only American, the only native English speaker, the only person who had ever been to the Western Hemisphere <laughs> at all, uh, and was working on building a Roman labyrinth uh, in Bavaria at the site of the Roman Limes, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site marking the border of the former Roman Empire. I know it's a crazy story. <laughs> I didn't know anything about labyrinths before this experience, but it was just amazing seeing these little towns and talking to people from all these different countries. I talked to people from Spain, kind of broken English or my broken Spanish, and was asking them, you know, what do you think about the United States? What do you, what do, how, I asked them, what do houses in Spain look like? As we were looking at one of these beautiful little houses in this village of about 500 people where we were living in Germany. And she told me, and I asked, what do you think of houses in the United States? It's like, oh, I, you know, houses in the U.S., you all have big yards, uh, and you all have an American flag out front. Uh, and I said, well, I have a Pennsylvania flag out front, but no U.S. flag. But it was just cool to see these different little things uh, that, that people think about the U.S., uh, people's international, people from other countries. You know, their, their news about the United States comes from CNN. It comes from, you know, the, the religious fanatics. It's, it's the stuff that the president's doing, this and that. And they don't get the authentic experience the same way that we think that, you know, maybe that, like, all of Germany is bratwurst eating beer stein drinking Oktoberfest fiends when it's really just a little part of Germany. You know, and all Americans don't talk with a southern accent. Ask anyone outside of the U.S. What do Americans sound like? And they'll start talking with that Texas accent. That's how all Americans sound. After Germany, uh, I came home and did a little bit of planning, um, and I decided to go all out. Uh, I'd always wanted to go to Tikal, the Rome, or the excuse me, the Mayan ruins in Guatemala. Uh, I just been fascinated with these ever since learning about them in like seventh grade Spanish class. They seem like a really cool place to see ruins that weren't over touristy. I've never been to Greece or Egypt. I'd love to go, but they seemed like tourist attractions more than sites of, of ancient significance. Uh, and so to call in my mind was different. So I'd always wanted to go there. And so I found a volunteer program there that was really neat. I was able to kind of cut out the middleman by finding the volunteer program myself. And it was, a, it was called ARCAS, Asociación de Rescate y Conservación de Vida Silvestre, which is Spanish for uh, Association of the Wildlife Rehabilitation, more or less. Um, but they work with native wildlife from Guatemala. When they set up national parks in Guatemala in the 80s, they also made it illegal to smuggle parrots and other animals out of their parks and so they needed a place to rehabilitate all of these animals so they set up this animal rehab center i was able to find this place online just by typing in things as simple as guatemala volunteer uh, to call volunteer paten which is the region of guatemala where it is and volunteering and searching and was able to find this place where i was able to pay four hundred and fifty dollars or so a month for my housing and my lodging and get to do this really cool experience working with animals. Um, 